I'm Tanya Lesenska, and I want to give you a brief overview of a new paper by Beata Huska and myself that discusses politics under COVID-19 in the Western Balkans. The first part looks at how crisis response measures affected democratic governance and human rights and the political criteria for EU accession. What we found is that despite all the challenges it poses, the crisis didn't seem to have brought about a new era in the Western Balkans, but it has accentuated countries' existing vulnerabilities related to rule of law and democratic governance. The crisis has strengthened governments, weakened parliaments' legislative and oversight functions, limited media freedom, and led to an increase in breaches of personal data protection. Already in the early phase of the crisis, governments in the Western Balkans implemented especially harsh lockdown measures, which were enforced through fines and even detentions, limiting citizens' mobility and freedom of assembly. Yet most voters initially accepted them because they recognized that health systems in the region were poorly prepared for such a crisis. The variation in Western Balkans government's responses partly reflected differences in citizens' reaction to the crisis. Serbia, Montenegro, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Albania and Kosovo all experienced protests against the restrictions. Selective and arbitrary approaches to applying restrictions could have the most severe long-term effects of any aspect of the crisis response. Such decision-making sets important precedents. It exasperates the greatest threat to the accession process in the Western Balkans, backsliding on the EU's political criteria. The second part of our study explores how countries' relations with the EU and the accession process evolved during the pandemic. For instance, the pandemic did not cause but accelerated processes that partly contributed to the fall of Montenegro's Democratic Party of Socialist government. The advent of a new leadership provides an opportunity for long-awaited reforms in democratic governance and the rule of law. But there are concerns that the country's foreign policy orientation may shift away from its traditional alignment with the West. In Kosovo, the short-lived government by Vetevendosje fell during the pandemic, despite its strong democratic legitimacy. The COVID-19 crisis did not cause the government's fall, but provided an opportunity for the vote of no confidence, which brought the government down. The crisis appears to have accelerated the decline in EU's relationship with Vucic Serbia, reflected by the bloc's unwillingness to allow Serbia to open a new chapter in the accession process this year. The EU has also experienced a serious loss of credibility in Bosnia and Herzegovina due to its migration policies. Even before COVID-19, the situation of migrants and refugees stranded in Bosnia on their way to the EU seemed unsustainable and has considerably deteriorated during the pandemic. Montenegro, North Macedonia and Albania all made some progress towards accession, yet North Macedonia has suffered a setback in the opening of accession talks by Bulgaria's veto. Overall, we find that today the EU seems less inclined than it once was to allow Western Balkan governments to get away with democratic backsliding just because they align themselves with the bloc geopolitically. What we recommend is that the EU should welcome political changes that promise greater democracy and adherence to rule of law. While continuing to pressure governments across the region to make progress on these issues. By contrast, the EU should neither allow nor shun authoritarian governments to make progress with accession simply due to their geopolitical orientation. This is the only way to counterbalance the democratic backsliding that has accelerated during the COVID-19 crisis. The examples of North Macedonia and potentially Montenegro should signal to other Western Balkan states that accession is only possible if they engage in a democratic transformation. Furthermore, bilateral disputes should be left outside of the accession negotiations and member states should refrain from taking advantage by the asymmetry in the relationship with candidate states. Head on to our webpage to check out the full publication at ecfr.eu.